Happy Monday, you two. John Sears, your friendly, lean, and Microsoft aficionado here to talk to you on a new topic that I think you're really going to enjoy. And we're going to be talking in a whole series about project management in Microsoft 365. And today in particular, we're going to be talking about smart goals and Microsoft lists. And I think it'll be a new take on smart goals that you'll really appreciate. So let's get into it. So first, let's talk about our learning objectives. At the end of the session, our hope is that you'll be able to understand what a SMART goal is, know when to use it, know how to use it as part of a tool, because we're going to be integrating it into the 365 system. And we'll also go through a tool demo where I'll show you how I use Microsoft Lists to catalog SMART goals. And we'll also show you how to build one of your own. Now let's talk about SMART goals. So you've probably heard about SMART goals before. If you haven't, let's go ahead and define that. So SMART goals are SMART, meaning it's an acronym, S-M-A-R-T. Specifically, it means specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Now, as far as what each of those mean in detail, we'll be going into each and every one of those points. So first specific, a good goal is specific. Whenever possible, you wanna try and be as specific as possible with your goal because it makes it more easily understandable, comprehensible, and helps it be achieved. So some examples of specific versus non-specific goals. Non-specific goal might be, I wanna see the world. Specific is, I wanna travel more. We want things that lean into being quantifiable. A non-specific example is I want to be more successful. Specific is I want to advance in my career. Non-specific, I want to be fit. Specific, I want to be healthier. So you see we're leaning more into exactly what we mean when we say things. We don't want them to be ambiguous, and that'll be more important as we discuss the other parts of the SMART goal. Something that I really want to highlight is measurable. Now, there's lots of ways to quantify measurables, but when I think of measurable, I think of results-based accountability. So in terms of quantity, quality, effort, and effect, we're taking a look at how much did we do, how well did we do it, is anyone better off? Now, we could talk a lot more about results-based accountability. If you want to see my entire video on results-based accountability, check the link below. But generally speaking, we want to be able to quantify our progress and consider factors like, is what we're trying to track easy to measure and collect? Could we automate the tracking progress? Ultimately, we want to be able to convert it into some sort of visual because the numbers themselves may not be as substantive as we want. And if we couch it all in results-based accountability, we can really build a comprehensive measure of how much progress we're making towards our goals. And you can see in this picture an example of training. You might identify the number of people that are treated if you're dealing with a medical condition. The percent of staff with training or certification might quantify how well we did it. And then the real question is, how is anyone better off? Because really that's why we're doing this. That's why I'm giving you this training, right? It's because I want you to be better off, not just this many people watched my training, but this many people benefited from it. And so you might look at some numbers about like um, clients getting off of alcohol and drugs if you're trying to improve quality of life or percent of clients. Um, generally, the quality indicators are percentage-based where the quantity indicators are number-based. And generally speaking, the numbers in the quantity and effort category are very easy to capture. Like we know how much we're doing, but as far as the percentage of people that are better off through interacting with the changes that we implement, that's a lot harder to measure and takes a lot more work. Again, if you want to learn more about results-based accountability, check out the link in the video. So the next SMA in SMART is achievable. We want to focus on setting realistic goals. 
So we're using measures to determine a current state and a target, and then we update them as necessary. And if that's starting to sound a little familiar to one of my past videos, we'll be getting into that in a little bit. You also want to be able to assess your resources and constraints because even if something makes all the sense in the world to set up as a goal, if the conditions aren't right or the timing's not right, that's something you need to consider. And consider strategies for breaking larger goals into more achievable steps because sometimes you can't take the whole chunk. If I want to get my weight down to a certain percentage and I want to get my um, muscle to a certain level, maybe I set an intermediate goal that's part of the way there, or I focus on one aspect where, you know, I'm going to work on my cardio first, and then I'm going to work on increasing muscle. With our SMART goals, we want them to be relevant. And relevant goals tie into larger organizational trends. So you might have personal goals, but you have to make sure they align with what your overarching mission is in life, or if we're talking in work, you want to see how your goals fit into strategic plans. And you want your goals to be meaningful and impactful, but also, again, thinking about the last step, achievable. So don't be afraid to impact your core duties and make sure you can stick with the changes because as anyone that's ever tried to make any changes with their health is concerned, that's always the biggest hurdle, right? Is not just, can I lift once or twice or over a month or two months, but can I keep it up for a year, two years, three years? That's where you start to see the gains. That's where you start to see the improvements. So focus on things that you can stick to. And lastly, SMART goals are time bound. It's not just an abstract of, oh, I'll get around to it eventually. Um, anyone that owns a house knows that there's an infinite number of projects and it's the ones that you set deadlines for that actually get done. So you need to create that sense of urgency to make it happen. Otherwise, it's too easy to say, I'll get around to it, I'll get around to it, I'll get around to it. And we can use this as a priority setting mechanic, especially when you might come up with four or five SMART goals, whether it's work-related or personal life-related. But as far as which one to work on right now, especially if you're a procrastinator or have ADHD, you need to know which one should I be working on now to be able to focus on those. So there's lots of ways that you can apply SMART goals in your daily life. You can apply it to your job responsibilities, your career objectives. You can tie it into an organization's strategic priorities. You can work on it with yourself or with a coach, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, so career advancement, skill development, project completion. We're talking about this in terms of project management. It's a great project management tool. What are our goals for the project? How do we want to measure the success of that project? You don't always need to go full on, full project management system, but you should have a set of goals because if it's big enough to be a project, it should be big enough to set a goal for. And then once you have those goals, you can set strategies for managing time and priorities because you know when certain pieces have to be done, when certain elements become involved. So that's SMART goals in abstract. But here on my channel, I like to focus on Microsoft 365 and how we can fold it in with this project management. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and check out my list. And we're going to focus on collecting goals, measuring them, and creating a powerful visual. So let's go ahead and hop on. So you can see my smart goal list right here. We're using Microsoft lists. If you don't know where to find Microsoft lists, you just click on these nine dots. And uh, you may have to click on more apps, but it's the one that looks like the colored strips. And in this case, we're looking at my smart goals. So I've got some smart goals tied with my um, training orientation. So I have uh, this project management 365 series is part of six videos in total. All six videos are done. They just have to be recorded and uploaded to YouTube. And we are taking a look at our goal, which is specific. I'm going to show you how to do this percentage chart, which is a calculation that it's doing based on other fields. We have our resources, so in this case, Microsoft 365. Our motivation, which is why it's relevant, is we need to use Microsoft management to get better at project management. And that's why this training series exists. We're going to tie a start date and an end date because we want our video to be time 
bound. We want a goal owner because the great thing about these lists is that they can be shared. So maybe you're sharing your goals with uh, a community group to help stay motivated and have some accountability in achieving your goals. Or if you're doing this within a work group, a whole group smart goals can be seen. You can hold each other accountable or your manager holds you accountable. We talked about having a measure, that's them and our SMART goals. And in this case, our measure is trainings completed. We want something specific and something that we can document. Now, when we consider it as part of results-based accountability, this is a measure that is in the how much did we do category, right? Really easy to measure. Like, I need to make six trainings. I've made six trainings. I'm working on another training series, which is a series of targeted trainings that focus on how 365 tools work together. Um, it's using Copilot and 365 and a whole bunch of different 365 platform stuff, especially Power Platform, and tying all of that work together. I'm really looking forward to showing you guys that stuff. Uh, I've only finished four of those nine videos that I'm expecting to be in that series, so it's 44%. I created this list by going to Microsoft Lists. It's as easy as creating a new list. I created it off of a blank list. And then I just added the fields. So if we go back to our list, we have a, this is the title field. All Microsoft Lists start with the title field. They just renamed it to goal and made sure it was specific. We'll skip over percent of goal for right now. Resources is just a text field. Motivations, text fields, to date fields, start date and deadline. Goal owner is a person field so that it can grab from my organizational directory. Measure is a text field. And then target and current value are both in numbers. If you're adding columns because this is your first time in list and you've never seen this before, it's as easy as clicking add column, selecting the type of field you want. And then when you do that, it'll give you some basic options about how to customize it. Now you'll notice that um, calculated field is not listed here. That's what this is. This is a calculated field. In order to find calculated fields, you have to go all the way to the bottom, see all column types, and go ahead and click that. And then hit next. It will give you this, which is a more flexible SharePoint based pod. We've basically switched over from list to SharePoint. Lists is basically a skin over SharePoint libraries. And so uh, when you need to access a little more functionality, it's still going to put you on that back end and allow you to create a new field. Now, we did a calculated field for our work. And as you see, it took a second, but um, it created additional column settings down here in, in the view of a formula. Now, what we did for this was we did current value. So I'm just going to double click it. It populates current value divided by the target. So we can figure out how much of the current value our target is. And in our case, I made this a number field. And once you make it a number field, you can also specify it as a percentage. And you can specify the number of decimal places. I specified it as a percentage and made it uh, two decimal places for simplicity's sake. Now you'll notice that it also takes the view of a graph because it's really important when you're creating these that you focus on a visual aspect, at least to some degree, because numbers just aren't compelling as visuals. As humans, we're visual animals, and you can show someone a big number, but they won't really understand it unless they can see it in relative terms. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. If you're familiar with JSON formatting, you can actually go in and you can modify the JSON directly. Um, what I did in this case was I had to create the JSON by beginning with column settings, format this column, and it will give you some basic formatting options if it will populate here. Let's give that a refresh and see if that will work this time. There it goes, now it loaded. All right, 
So we can specify the column. In this case, we're working with our percent of goal. I clicked on data bars. You can do conditional formatting. So if you have thresholds or um, you want to specify the target because you might actually achieve over the target, you can do that. And then I edited the template, have it set from minimum value zero to maximum value one. So it sets the bar from zero to one. And because it automatically converts it to a percent, it basically runs from zero to 100%. And that's just an introduction. That's a casual, easy way. This didn't take very long at all to set up this template. And we can go ahead and use this for a team, an organization, and you can get really easy percent of goals. Now you can get more robust with this. One of the biggest advantages to doing things in a SharePoint list is that it's really easy to pull into Power BI or other dashboards. I'm only collecting one number for each goal. And I will always update the current value. If you are interested in potentially creating another list where you're collecting data at set intervals because you want to see how things change over time, that's a bit more complicated. You'd actually need a different list and you could start doing lookup values. So what I would do is I would create a uh, goal and a measure hybrid field. Again, using the same kind of calculated field I did here, but I would do a concatenation of that, create a new list where I am pulling from this list the concatenated goal measure combo. That way I can tie it back in. And then using Power BI, use a data model to connect those up so that we can take a look at say, you know, I want to see where how many trainings are here this month and then how many are here next month and then the next month. That way all I have to do is add, all right, so I'm doing the project management trainings completed pairing. So I'm going to go ahead and select that from a dropdown and then specify what that value is. And then maybe I'd specify a date for the date that I measured that. And that gives us a more, uh, complex, but also more powerful tool for measuring how our goals change. And that might be all I would tell you about SMART goals. That's where I think most people would stop. But I really want to take it to the next level because a lot of times SMART goals get developed and then ignored. And that's really, really frequent. We get as far as saying, all right, we need to be thoughtful about our goals. We need to be very specific in our goals. But how do you actually translate our goals into measurable results? And that's where the improvement kata comes in. So if you've never heard of the improvement kata or after I talk a little bit about the improvement kata, you want to learn more. There's another link in the description where you'll be able to learn a lot more about the improvement kata. But functionally, the improvement kata is about using the scientific method to compare what you think to what actually happens and incrementally work towards a goal. So if you consider this chart down here, we have our direction, our challenge, or our SMART goal. We grasp the current condition, and we have established a target condition. Now, these can change as you work towards your goal, um, but then you conduct experiments to get there. So you're getting the direction, you're grasping the condition, you establish a target, and then you do something on a regular basis to push towards that goal. Now you can do that either as an individual, if you're very self-directed, you could practice it with a coach or a manager or a friend. Again, ultimately it comes down to accountability because it can be really hard to improve something. And if you're looking for that motivation, just having someone to check in with and verify that you're moving in the direction you want to move can be a really powerful tool in helping you to achieve those goals. So to summarize, let's get smart with our goals. A really, really easy way to begin with Microsoft lists in collecting those smart goals and then practice the improvement kata in order to make those goals a reality. And with that, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Have a great rest of your day.